when you get to the end of replication, there's a part of your strand that you do not have a primer for. And because of that, you cannot fill in these last remaining nucleotides in your double-stranded DNA. So this is the issue, is that basically you're losing genetic material at the end of every single replication. And for your cells and your body right now, there's a clock of basically 50 cycles of replications before which the three prime overhang becomes so much. The loss of genetic material you get from losing genetic, from, from replication is something where your cells are eating into the essential proteins that they need to survive, the information that encodes for them, and now your cells are no longer viable. So that's basically mother nature's clock, so to speak, as to you only get 50 replications before you can die with linear chromosomes because of this end replication problem. Now, when we look at telomeres, telomeres are really just these hexameric repeats. And what I mean by that is they are just these six nucleotides, T, T, A, G, 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 and they're multiplied by some n number of times. And these can be thousands of base pairs long. And the, what telomeres get us is basically stability. And what I mean by that is when we look at a chromosome, when your cell is about to replicate in mitosis, it needs to pack up all this DNA so that it can move half the DNA to one daughter cell and half the DNA to another daughter cell. DNA is extremely long relative to the size of the cell, so it needs a way of condensing all this stuff into a compact box that it can transport easily, and these are what are called chromosomes. And so basically the DNA wraps around these histones, these histones wrap around each other to form chromatin, and then these chromatin condense even more until we get something called this chromosome. And basically DNA is very similar to a fiber and a rope. And what we know about ropes is that ropes can fray at either end. And so what these telomeres do is they basically help fuse together and stick together the ends of the rope. And so you've got basically four telomere regions of your chromosome, and they have the intention of basically keeping the rope together at these four ends. Otherwise, this stuff will begin to unfurl, and we would end up with a lot of issues because we want to make sure that we're getting all of the genetic material we need to into our daughter cells when we're replicating our cells. Now, how do telomeres factor into this end replication problem we were just talking about? And the way they do that is as follows. So telomerase is known as something called a reverse transcriptase or an RTase. RTases are also known as this thing called RNA-derived uh, DNA polymerases. And so basically what they do is they supply RNA so that DNA can be built on it. So what this thing called telomerase does is it basically will come into this picture if we look at our three prime overhang and RNA polymerase is going to supply, I'm sorry, telomerase is going to supply an RNA template here. And what we know about our DNA polymerase is that it is perfectly happy building onto this three prime end. So DNA polymerase will come here and it will synthesize the complementary strand of DNA out to here I'll just try to make sure this picture is consistent. But basically, what is happening with our telomerase is it's supplying RNA to extend this three prime overhang even more. And the consequence of this is now that you've got even more of this three prime overhang, we likely will be able to make use of a primer, an RNA primer, to come down. And so telomerase and the RNA primer will leave. The DNA on this three prime overhang will stay, but it will be even longer. And then we're gonna have a primase come in, which will be known in eukaryotes as DNA polymerase one. And this is going to have the following characteristics where uh, we have our five prime end right there and our three prime end. And this is a critical component because what happens next is that DNA polymerase again is gonna be able to come in here. 
and it's going to be able to build in the complementary DNA nucleotides to extend this thing. And then what happens next is we're going to remove this RNA primer. This is done by something in eukaryotic cells called RNA ACE H. And DNA polymerase can go away. And now what we're left with is our three prime overhang. We've successfully filled in this region of missing genetic material with more telomeres. And so because of that, we haven't run the risk of losing this genetic material because of a cellular division. So that is the key thing that happens during this process because now we are able to replicate indefinitely and extend the life of a given cell. And there are consequences to this. One of the most notable is the fact that when you look at a cancer, cancer is basically uncontrolled cell growth. And there's a reason that mother nature has built in this quote unquote end replication problem because it is basically a limit to the number of times a cell can replicate. Now, if you had a way of turning telomerase on indefinitely, telomerase is just gonna keep extending this DNA indefinitely and so your cell is never gonna have to worry about losing its genetic material from all these divisions. And so that is the reason why cancers become quote unquote immortal because they are not subject to the same rules and regulations that the healthy normal cells in your body are. So even though telomerase might be able to make you immortal and make you able to replicate as many times as you want, it also is what leads to cancers that end up killing people. And that is something that is very, double-sided to this whole thing or notion of how do we extend the cell's life because we're basically understanding now that you know it's a double-edged sword to what we're doing here but i will leave the philosophy at that um, and i just think this is an extremely interesting topic to see how telomeres and telomerase are able to help us recover the dna that we are losing after replications and how it's also able to stabilize our chromosomes that were able to successfully complete cellular divisions. So with that, I will end things. If you have any questions, let me know, and thank you all for watching.